Okay, I think we are about live. I am waiting just to see some confirmation on my end that we're actually live streaming here. But, hey, it looks like everything is going. I'm just going to do a quick audio check. We are about live. Cool. No, it seems like everything is working. Okay, hopefully today's live stream is a little better. I got RTX voice on, and I've got some better background situation going, so we can see more of what I'm trying to show y'all on the screen. Uh, my streaming game's pretty weak, <laughs> but we're trying to fix that. No hat today, just going with the straight up hair, my craziness. I need a haircut. Dear Lord. Anywho. Once again, we're looking at some crazy hot ends and other 3D printer stuff on AliExpress because I make a lot of videos on a lot of different things involving 3D printers as of late. And I find that uh, a lot of the ideas that I get uh, come from what I see on AliExpress. Now, there's some pretty cool stuff here. And the first live stream went pretty decent. I figured... Let's do it again. So, grab a seat, crack open a cold one. It's just some cherry Pepsi. And let's get on with the stream. Okay. So, hmm. A little watery. That ice be mountain. Now, I know not a lot of people are, are here live because right now in Central Standard Time, it's 9.30 p.m., but I am somewhat of a night shift guy myself. So I got to get better at finding a good live stream time. I didn't think I was going to be live streaming today, but I figured what the heck, why not? But let's, let's actually get into this here. So currently what we're looking at here is a hot end from Mellow. And we're just going to kind of go wherever the AliExpress algorithm takes us because once you start looking at something in this genre of parts, it just keeps on going and going. And eventually we're going to just get to something interesting. Now, I had an idea, and uh, for those of you that watch this and do end up joining us live, uh, here's kind of the idea. I was talking, I was thinking about maybe one day doing a Patreon where the, all the money from the Patreon goes towards something that we all see on AliExpress and think, hey, that'd be really cool to test out and just, if we all collectively just put in a few bucks here and there, I could order it, put it on my printer, test it out and see if it's actually any good. But uh, I'm still kind of playing with that idea. I don't know if I really want to do that. And then I had another idea. Well, I could enable Super Chats. And those of you who watch this live, if we see something that catches your eye, you can Super Chat at me at some point. Not on this live stream. I don't think I've actually enabled it. But I'm just toying with the idea. But you, could super, you guys could Super Chat at me about the thing that you see and that money from that super chat would go towards funding the goal to get that part so that we can test it and then i was thinking at when i'm done testing i could just give the part away to one of the viewers uh in in the live stream so that that's the idea because the re the thing is a lot of these parts are really cool, but the reality is I, I currently have a machine that I consider my production machine. It's wickedly reliable, and I love it the way it is. But we have another machine that is just purely for testing whatever we want. It's another Ender 3, and it's based heavily off of my very, very nice production-grade machine, or at least I consider it production-grade. And that's the one we do just, like, whatever we want with it. So... But let's let's actually start start getting on with this here. So I've gassed on for a few minutes now. So this is well, you can you can see the catalog that uh, that Mellow has here, and I talk about Mellow a lot because in terms of the quality that you get from Mellow, they're actually really good for what you're getting. There's a few brands that come up a lot when it comes to AliExpress parts, and one of them is absolutely mellow, and the other one is typically Triangle Labs. 
Now, we can click on any one of these things and it'll bring us to whatever we click on. But we will get there in a wee bit. So we're currently looking at this and I forget if I forget what they're calling this one. They've got a bunch of different hot ends that are like this crazy amalgamation of different designs. So this this is a Mark 8 compatible hot end. So this is these are Mark 8 heat blocks, uh, Mark 8 nozzles, and the mounting points are the same as a standard Mark 8 for like your Ender 3. Uh, the difference is it uses a Bowden collet at the top to retain instead of a pneumatic coupler. And uh, the heatsink is much more reminiscent of what you would find on an E3D V6. However, I think if we look at the heat brake, so, okay, we're getting, so we're looking at the heat brake now. Um, the heat sink is not nearly as wide in diameter as what you would find on an E3D V6. It actually kind of reminds me of something, uh, the, the Mosquito from Slice Engineering. It looks like they took the same design uh, where they, if you look right around here, it's a bi-metal heat break. Um, and the titanium portion of the bi-metal heat break. Uh, so what Slice Engineering did is they took the heat break, made it out, out of titanium, made it super, super thin. So there's very little thermal mass. And titanium is also a really bad conductor of heat, which is what you want in a heat break. And that allows you to have the ability to print at high temperatures without it clogging the area above the melt zone, which is a good thing. So it looks like they took the bimetal heat break design from Slice Engineering, took the heat sink design from an E3D V6, took the mounting design from a Mark 8 hot end, used a Bowden collet instead of a pneumatic coupler, and it's a standard Mark 8 heat block and Mark 8 nozzle, which I, I find it really interesting. And you're going to see this a lot with a lot of these AliExpress things. So if, if we look down here, they, they consider this kind of like an evolution to the classic Micro Swiss design. Okay. Um, the Micro Swiss design in itself is really good. In fact, I got a video coming up. Well, the video I took. So I had a, I had a FLIR camera that I was using to take a look at so the thermals of a hot end to see how quickly heat creep sets in if you don't cool off the heat sink. And unfortunately, we, our target temperature was 250 degrees Celsius in that video. I haven't uploaded it yet, but uh, it turns out our FLIR is only capable of reading up to 120 degrees Celsius. So didn't really tell much, tell us as much as we wanted to know. But uh, it goes into people be driving. Anywho, uh, it goes into talking about their concepts here. So obviously you got the melt zone down here, the heat break, and we got the dissipation of heat, etc. Comes in a few different variations. And honestly, if I got one. I would kind of be interested in trying out the full copper setup just because if you want really good melts, copper is great at conducting heat. It's got more thermal mass than brass, as well as the heat block is going to have way more thermal mass in the same volume as aluminum. And then they, they go into how it's all made here. But one thing I wonder about this is it really looks like the heat break is permanently inset into the heat sink. So if you had even like just a mild uh, gantry crash on your hotbed and that heat break snaps, which if it's the way I think it's made, it's already really thin metal and titanium is really brittle. So it's going to be really easy to snap that heat break. And if that happens, you're just out of luck, dude. 
Like, there, you're not going to find this anywhere other than from Mello, and you're going to have to order another one. So it's one of those things where uh, if you don't have some sort of mitigation for or, or some sort of safety uh, protocol set up for <laughs> Ganji crashes, ooh, you're going to ruin this hot end. It's going to take you another month to get a new one, buddy. And that's on that's that's assuming you know the uh, the economic situation isn't as bad in terms of shipping as it has been for the last year and a half. So it it's really cool how they how they go about this, but this is hardly the most interesting design. So, okay, N now we're getting into the, the advertisements section, right? And we can look at a few different things. Actually, this one right here is really kind of neat. I did look at this one uh, the other day. So, let's look at this crazy extruder, right? And so... It took me a minute to figure out exactly what they were doing here. Because we take a look at this, and it looks like a BMG that's just missing one of the sides. Like, it, it's just open. And at first, you're like, what's the point of that? Like, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But when you scroll down, it, it becomes more apparent what what it is they're doing because they spell it out a little better. So it's your standard BMG extruder setup for the most part. But what makes this difference, and I think they've got a picture of it somewhere. Do they not have a picture? Okay, you can put a 4010 fan on it. That's cool. Not what I care about. Do they really not show a picture? I know I've seen pictures of what they've what they've done. I have to click on a. Here we go. So okay. I don't know why they don't just have a picture on their advertisement. I got to look at a customer review <laughs> to see what it's doing. But this is kind of neat. So look at look at what they've done here. They've skeletonized the entire BMG, right? And instead of the BMG being attached to like a V6 style mount on a hot end, the hot end's heat break is directly screwed into the BMG just a tiny bit past the extruder gears. And this is actually really interesting in that, okay, that heat break right there, it looks like they're using uh, their their crazy hot ends heat break, which is really just of uh, Slice Engineering's Mosquito. And that is, it looks like they're using their mag Mosquito Magnum heat break on the Mosquito's heat block. Yeah, so that's, that's not Mark 8. Um... Take a better look here, but yeah, that's that's really interesting, and that's that's wickedly compact for what it is, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, if you put that with even a pancake stepper, if it's the right size and tune the e steps right, that could actually be a pretty interesting concept right there. Because I th that's the thing, like, so the BMG. Um, that comes from, jeez, I can't remember. I've looked at so many clones that actually, it's not coming to mind, uh, the name brands of the company that made the original BMG. This is what AliExpress has done to me. I, I, can't, I can't remember the real names of anything now, but... Uh, so this is kind of what I'm getting at by the weird, crazy stuff on AliExpress. Does this actually work any good? Heck if I know. I've never had one in my hands. But it looks neat. And in theory, if you take 
the concepts from what slice engineering is made and you take the concepts from the BMG style extruder it looks like it would work perfectly fine and then you also can mount a 4010 fan right here and it would blow air directly on the heat sink of uh, this see the, the heat break and the heat sink are once again permanently connected to each other and that's really thin thin metal but but there is a big but here what makes this design perfectly okay even if you were to crash the gantry if you shut it off right away you know or something like that like there are four posts or at least two but I think four one right here one behind it one right here and that gives extra support and that's directly on the flat parts it's mounted to on this BMG and that creates a lot of extra rigidity so you wouldn't actually damage any of the heat break assembly in, a, in the event of a gantry crash or sliding the gantry or sliding the nozzle on a bad level bed or something like that because of that. The Slice Engineering did that originally because they wanted to be able to change nozzles on their hot end like that. Just unscrew it and screw a new one in. You don't got to worry about how you would with other hot ends where you got to grip the heat block and then twist properly with um, your tool of choice while everything's hot and everything. You can do this with a one-handed operation on uh, the Mosquito from Slice Engineering, which, you know, really cool. And it looks like they're kind of sticking to that design. So it, it's, again, this crazy amalgamation of these different um, concepts from these different style hot ends and apparently extruders too being just shoved into one product which I think is really neato and let's see okay where can we go from here that's interesting um looks like they have already made well I, you know the, the mosquito is not the only hot end that uh, slice engineering has made they also made I think it's called the copperhead and this looks to be like a copperhead knockoff right there which oh hey look looky here replacement heat brakes that looks like uh, the heat break on a mosquito hot end which is interesting but you know what I think uh, if we had more people and we were live commenting, I would let people comment where we should go next on this list of advertised products. I personally think we should talk about the Copperhead clones. So what the heck, why not go to a Copperhead clone? And so far we're still within Mellow's ecosystem here. Okay, so we got two different style mounts here. We've got... We've got, let me scroll down. We got one with a V6 style mount, and we got one with a Mark 8 style mount. So pick your poison, more or less. But this is like almost exactly a Copperhead clone. It, it, okay, not exactly, but it's, it's like 90% Slice Engineering Copperhead. And they've just changed up the heatsink a bit for different mounting options. And oh, it actually looks like... Oh. Actually, okay, I like the fact that there's an exploded view here. So we got the silicone sock. Looks like a ruby-tipped nozzle. Heat break, all that good stuff. Now, this right up here, I would absolutely go with this. Mm, wait, no, you couldn't. Mm. No, if I were to get something like this, I would rather get this, but have the threads for this on top, because those of you who have seen my videos know I do not like Bowden collets, and I do not like pneumatic couplers. I like compression fittings. Compression is king. I have like 500 hours on a compression fitting setup and not a single issue with it 
I have not had to change a Bowden tube, cut Bowden tube, or adjust any sort of Bowden tube anything ever since I went to compression. It is phenomenal, and so far only Micro Swiss implements any hot end natively with compression fittings because I actually, so, side note, speaking of hot ends and custom stuff, I had been talking to Micro Swiss for probably like a year now, but in the last several months, I had talked to Micro Swiss and I had them make me a custom hot end that uses M10 threads and I had some compression fittings that would uh, screw into M10 threads and it had the same uh, diameter on the other side for your standard Bowden tube. And they, they made me this heat sink and ever since I used it with the compression fittings, like, dude, it's rock solid. And uh, the idea works so well that if you look on Micro Swiss's website, they too are now using a very similar, if not almost exactly the same style compression fitting for their CR6S, I think, heat sinks. Something like that. So they, they thought it was a great idea too. And you know, ever since I brought it up to them, they were testing it a lot as well and they liked it. They And like, there's nothing that not to like about that uh, compression fitting they just work it, it it's probably going to cost people some money because you're not going to be able to sell all those replacement parts when you find one part that just works and doesn't break but we're all in this together and we're all about trying to find the more reliable solution i don't like doing printer maintenance and I don't think anyone does like doing maintenance unless they're getting paid by the hour to fix it. Anywho. Oh, okay, cool. Now this comes up with some thermal grease. Now this looks like the same kind of stuff you would get from E3D. That you would put on the threads of the heat break before you uh, twist it into the heat sink. And it's a special type of uh, thermal compound that will transfer the heat. And it's like, I forget what it's made of, um, but it's rated for some really high temperatures. And it, it helps make sure that heat sink transfers heat away from the heat break very nicely. Now, they even tell you compatible with BMG extruders, Titan extruders, Prusium uh, i3s, V6, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of nice little packaging. Probably a little overkill packaging for what it is, but hey, you know, if you want to make a statement. Oh, hey, we got some people commenting. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Thanks for joining. So we're looking through. You know, I, I always find this kind of funny. You know, there's a compatible with all filaments, including PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU. Uh... PP. I'm so immature. PC, nylon, peak, PEI. Now, the thing about this is they say this peak and PEI. Those are engineering grade materials. You got to ask yourself because a quarter of a kilogram, so like 250 grams of either of that filaments, is so much more than the cost of this hot end. Are you really going to use engineering grade filaments on a cheap AliExpress hot end? Are you really going to do that? Or are you, if you're using that kind of filament, you are most likely in the class of individual with a budget to buy a genuine part, you know? I mean, I'm not saying that this part couldn't handle it. I'm just saying that if something goes wrong, there's tried and true options out there rather than these, um, well, this, which admittedly is really cool, but mm, I've heard of problems with these bimetal heat breaks from China compared to the ones that Slice Engineering sells themselves. You got to remember... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Slice Engineering that came up with the whole concept of bimetal heat breaks. 
And the moment they released the, the whole bimetal situation, every Chinese manufacturer started just bimetaling everything, and there were tremendous problems with the whole thing. Like, it's it sounds like an easy enough thing for companies of this caliber or this... Uh, maybe caliber is not necessarily the right word. With, with this capacity to mimic but no there's there's some genuinely tight tolerances and quality control that needs to be really strictly strictly adhered to to achieve the result that slice engineering was going for with all this so have they fixed the problem i don't know i do know some chinese manufacturers that make the bimetal heat breaks have made like sort of a voluntary recall where they'll replace it for you with a newer design or something right that they came up with a newer reversion and um I, it's been a long time since i've seen it but i've heard i've heard that okay here's here's one that i was actually kind of curious about for a while the the zone the zone if my internet would be so kind as to open the link, please. Maybe AliExpress is having an aneurysm. Here we go. Well, that, that only took half of forever. So, the zone was one of the ones I noticed relatively early on that I thought was kind of neat. <sighs> Gotta get some better drinks for these live streams. So again, this is a Mark 8 type hot end, right? It's its dimensions and fittings are there to mimic the Mark 8. And what we've got is a Bowden collet at the top, Mark 8 heat block, Mark 8 nozzle, and all this right here is just a different kind of heat sink, right? So it's reminiscent of Micro Swiss's design. And I'm trying to gather. I say, ooh, aerospace materials. I'm like, no one really cares about that that buzzword, right? They've got the bimetal heat break here as well. And the heat break is more reminiscent of what you would find in like a V6, right? Um, and the problem with that is I actually really like Micro Swiss's heat break for one particular reason. And that's because at the very end of the threads, there is a physical stop. And that is predetermined based on the dimensions of a Mark 80 block. So you can only twist the heat break a predetermined distance into the heat block, which is great because then when you screw in your nozzle, it will always butt up against the heat break at a specific uh, location every single time. There's no wiggle room between there. And if you change a nozzle or you do anything, any sort of maintenance, you can be assured that your offsets that you set on your printer are still going to be super duper close to what you had before. I'm talking like your Z-axis offsets for like baby stepping and that sort of thing, right? For when you're printing using um, your auto bed leveling system. So I like systems that are predetermined locations that you can be certain will be accurate every single time in the same spot. And this ain't it. This doesn't do it. I wish they would do it with things like um, like uh, V6 style heat breaks. It seems like an obvious thing to do in my opinion. Uh, it would make life much easier and it would make the whole thing way more reliable. But let's, re let's read a little of the comments. Uh, Ralph says, I just got a Micro Swiss clone for 20 bucks. It's so nice. It could use a better nozzle though. Well, so I have a few nozzles. I've got a bunch of really crappy brass nozzles. I will never use brass again because brass is weak and it's malleable. 
If you tighten brass nozzles too easily, they can snap and then the threads are stuck in the heat block. I don't want to deal with it. Also, the dimensions of brass nozzles vary vastly between manufacturers. I don't care for it. Uh, A2 hardened steel nozzles are awesome for the most part. I've personally never had a problem with them. I've had like literally over a thousand print hours on a single A2 hardened steel nozzle. Uh, I think they're good, but I currently run M2 hardened steel nozzles. So, thing about M2 hardened steel nozzles is um, I've got some cheap ones from Mellow, like $10 a piece. They work perfectly fine, but the thing about M2 steel is that it will rust. Uh, so I have ones that I got from Micro Swiss. They're about $24 each, but they have a lifetime guarantee against wear, which is awesome. And I've been using that for many, many hundreds of hours, probably over a thousand print hours at this point, going strong with no signs of any wear. It's also coated. It's electroplated uh, M2 hardened steel with a WS2 coating to help make the surface more slick to prevent uh, plastic from building up on it. Because M2 hardened steel is a bit tacky in that sense, or it likes to build up on bare M2 steel. But if you have the WS2 coating, it's not nearly as bad. I honestly think the Micro Swiss Mark 8 nozzles are just perfection in terms of nozzles. And you can be sure that any nozzle you buy from Micro Swiss will be the exact same dimensions every time. That's why even on our experimental machine, we run real Micro Swiss nozzles. To be fair, if you do a lot of changes on your printer, you don't know what it is you want to keep uh, in terms of your current build, if you want to mod it or go in a different direction, different hot ends, then yeah, the investment doesn't make sense. But if you have a machine that you use for what you would consider legitimate production, then find the nozzle that works for you and get the best one you can because I tell you what, brass, it starts to wear away and then you get print issues and you wonder what the problem is and you're always replacing them. And it's just not worth it to me to keep replacing brass. I much prefer just getting everything right and doing as little maintenance as possible because that is the most annoying thing about printing is maintenance. John says, good info on the Micro Swiss nozzle. Yeah, no, it's I'm, I'm, the thing about Micro Swiss is I'm their biggest fan and also their, their harshest critic because I talk about their clones and the competition in China that they have to face all the time. But uh, I do really actually like Micro Swiss products. They, they do things right and they're starting to make some progress. So... I know they're more expensive, but sometimes you just got to get the thing that works, man. And sometimes the Chinese stuff is good at looking like it will work, but not actually working. So, you know, there's a big difference between looking nice and working nice. But going, going down with this, you know, okay, this picture right here. This, this says a lot. This tool right here, I don't know if anyone who's viewing this knows what this is, but I, I have a Threadripper CPU in my computer. And in order to torque down the, uh, the mounting plate on the CPU, on the mother, for the CPU on the motherboard, you, it comes with a Torx, uh, Torx bit um, torque wrench. And it's, I think it's two or four nano, or not nanometers, uh, la, 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 newton meters of torque. And Micro Swiss recommends three newton meters of torque for the nozzles going onto, uh, into the heat block. And this little tool is a little tiny, tiny little handheld torque wrench. And, and they're set to a predetermined uh, torque. So you just get the one, get one like three newton meters, which is like spot on what you need. And anytime you change or tighten a nozzle, you don't got to guess. It'll make a, it'll click and you'll know exactly that it's tight just enough because if you over tighten a nozzle, man, you'll rip the threads right off of the cylinder inside of, 
uh, the cylindrical bore where the threads are tapped into in like an aluminum heat block and that it's so easy to do because aluminum is just such a bad metal to use for heat block so I will never go back to aluminum just use copper it's so much stronger it lasts so much longer too okay looking at some comments here let's see hi Andrew I have that mellow NF heat or NF heat end with the volcano block and seems to be working very well that's awesome to hear because I, I actually would love to hear your guys's experiences with any of these hot ends or components because there's a there's a lot to go there's a lot to talk about um, so fun fact while we're talking about tightening procedures uh, TH3D in their in their user manuals brought up a really good point I actually blew up a TH3D um, easy board light in my earlier days in, in printing because when I was changing a nozzle you gotta have you gotta have the the, the heat block hot to expand the metal to remove everything and this is back in the days when I was still using a glass bead thermistor and I accidentally shorted the connection from the heater cartridge to the thermistor and that sent current right into the CPU of the easy board light motherboard and I blew a hole in the CPU totally my fault by the way absolutely my fault I sent it in for warranty repair they were able to solder on a new CPU and I I, I paid to have it fixed because I love that motherboard it's such a good motherboard <laughs> but man that was a hard lesson to learn so when you're tightening the nozzle down and you gotta hold the heat block here's a friendly tip get it hot get it real nice and hot but before you hold that heat block with a tool just shut the power off to the machine make sure you know it's not on then hold it with a tool and turn because then if you maybe if you short those contacts nothing's going to happen because power is not going through it and th3d actually writes that in their manual now and i'm just like that's a good that's a good idea because blow up a CPU on a motherboard once, shame on me. Blow it up twice, I'm out of money. <laughs> oh, man. Trail Peacher says, I did that with an E3, E3 Mini. Fun fireworks. Oh, dude. I didn't get the smoke. That's the thing. I didn't get that famous smoke that people get. Uh, it was literally it's just like eh, I'm working on there. It was late. I was doing a lot of troubleshooting with my old old setup, and I you know hear, and then everything's off, and I'm like, ah oh, crap, and it really sucks because you know what the worst part of it was? It was right during the beginning of the whole medical emergency lockdown situation we were dealing with last year and this year right y'all know what i'm talking about and i was 3d printing face shields with operation shields up to donate to my local hospitals and i broke the friggin motherboard so i couldn't print on my machine so my friend who also has his machine at my place we got his machine hooked up and it was with an E3D Hamera and it was with the stock uh, motherboard that you get, the Mel Z board, uh, with, the, with the Ender 3 Pro. And I'm like, well, we got to use this thing. And I tell you what, the thermistor wasn't working right on that E3D Hamera. Turns out we accidentally at some point cut the wires and soldered the thermistor wires back together. We were getting readings that were way off, but they were really consistent, so I was able to figure it out. Long story short, though, we did end up making a hundred face shields uh, that we donated to three different hospitals. Um, 
to help out with the effort to get um, PPE supplies to where it needed to go because, uh, you know, a few weeks prior to that endeavor, we had someone that we knew passed away from the illness. And we thought, man, no, this this is this is legit. This is real. We all need to pull together. Uh, Joanne Fabrics was doing stuff like donating kits to people who could sew to make face masks to donate. I was 3D printing the face shields. People in my community donated some cash to get the uh, buttonhole elastic to go around the mask and the actual plastic pieces I was manufacturing at all. And actually, we ended up donating probably like 50 face shields to my local hospital directly to the COVID uh, unit in the hospital. Um, and just so happens that a few months later, I ended up getting uh, the the screw it. We I ended up getting COVID, right? And I ended up in that hospital unit uh, for a week, and they straight up saved my life. So I feel like maybe it was some cosmic karma that did some good, you know. And uh, whoo, man, I tell you that that's not a fun thing to go through, man. It, it was bad. But they were still using some of those masks in the unit at that time, too. The supply chain was just starting to get better. And, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think they would use those face shields for more than a few days. But the, the hospital, the area it was in, is relatively low-income area. And... There's just not, not enough money and supplies to go around at that time. Things have gotten so much better, but that that's that's my little story <laughs> when it comes to all this. Um, oh, man, there's a lot more comments. Hold on, let me read these comments. Uh, let's see. Ralph says, uh, this Friday he's putting in an SKR Mini E3 V2. Hope it goes well. Well, I, I wish you the best with that. Uh, John says, never thought about shorting the thermistor. Good to know that story. Yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't know about that either. Oh, but you know what? I haven't had a single issue with that sort of thing ever since I switched to bolt-type thermistors. So you know there's the retention screw that holds the glass bead thermistor in its position? There are people, and you go on AliExpress, maybe we'll look one up, where they just take a brass bolt, they cut a hole in it, put the glass bead thermistor in there and use a special epoxy to hold it in place. And then they use fiberglass around the wires that go from in there all the way out. And that protects everything in the thermistor. I have been running the same thermistor for over a year now without any issues. It's a Gulf Coast Robotics, but I got plenty of them that I got from AliExpress too. They are phenomenal. And they are like impossible to break on the thermistor itself. The glass bead is completely protected. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull one up, actually. Um, I'm gonna go off screen here for a second, and let me see if I can pull it up. Here we go. Let's go. Right. Okay. Thermistors, let's talk about it. This is a bolt type thermistor. This is what I use, these things right here. Instead of using the retention screw to hold the glass bead in there, you pull out the retention screw and screw this in its place. The thermistor is inside of this brass bolt. It's epoxied in, it's got fiberglass, uh, a heat shielding around the wires and if it ever goes bad it disconnects from a male female connection so it's easy to replace i've actually only ever had a bad go bad once and that was my fault for not implementing strain relief on the wires but ever since i got my replacement man these things are awesome we'll never use a different type of thermistor again because i've dealt with cartridge ones and i hate those uh, I've dealt with the glass bead ones. The only thing this doesn't really cover is like 
thermocouples, so like PT100s, PT1000 thermocouples, you still need a cartridge style slot for those. But if you're just running a 3950 uh, to a thermistor, like 100K thermistor, look into these. They are solid. And I just, I love these things. Oh, small little rant there. Going back to the comments. Oh, uh, let's see. Superconductor says he just got the SKR2 that will be going into his Ender 6 next week. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, Creality has been on a roll releasing new printers. You see they released one that's completely enclosed with a heated chamber and everything? I think, I don't know if it's a Core XY style, but they just, the patents on heated chambers expired relatively recently, so expect to see a lot more heated chambers. All right. Uh, trail features. It was pretty awesome seeing the maker community come together and help out the frontline workers. Yeah. No, it was it was really good and it was it was personal for me because you know losing losing someone that I knew and then myself going through it and then one of uh one of the people in my neighborhood their daughter worked in the hospital covid unit that I was in when I got sick and you know it's man it it's it's gnarly but man my, my the community in my neighborhood really pulled together to help everyone out that they could. Like I love the community I live in. There's so, I'm surrounded by such good people. Like I really am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, reading over the comments. Can okay, Andrew. Can you recommend a good quality volcano nozzles? So, uh. I've actually never worked with a volcano hot end myself. I've worked with a lot of Mark 8 stuff. I've worked with V6 style um, lowers, and I have the Hymera uh, actual direct drive setup that I've used, but I've never actually used a straight up V6. Kind of weird. I plan to try that out at some point. Um, the thing about volcanoes is the melt zone is obviously much, much bigger. That's the whole point, right? Because it's volcanoes are all about, not really about precise printing, but high volume printing. That's, that's, that's where they get their speed is high volume. If you go too slow on a volcano, it might clog. If you retract a little too much, you're gonna pull molten, fil molten filament into the heat break, and that's a lot more molten filament than usual. And then that's going to clog. Uh, volcanoes are cool. They do serve a purpose. Um, the reason I haven't done anything with a volcano is I don't have a printer nearly big enough to really utilize what a volcano is for. Um, but what I can say this is if you're going for a high flow situation, you might want to look into copper nozzles. Uh, so nickel plated copper nozzles. So that way you really utilize as much as you can because another problem is heating up the heat block on a volcano. Keeping that temperature consistent, even with good PID tunes, it's kind of hard because you're shoving cold filament constantly through something that's constantly heating up. So, Keeping it hot, you know, higher temperature, higher temperature um, heating cartridge is an absolute must. But using something nickel plated copper, uh, I'd say if we're going to go that route, um, try looking into Mellow. I've got a few Mellow nozzles and the stuff that Mellow puts out on AliExpress is actually pretty good. In fact, tell you what, tell you what, let me, let me look really quick and see if I can't find you what I'm talking about. So, let's see, Mellow Volcano Nozzle.
Uh, I should probably specify copper. And oddly enough, I don't actually see one from Mill popping up, but I do see one from another well known name. So let's bring this to the forefront. Let me bring back this. So, okay, this is what I'm talking about. So this is. This is what you would use for, come on, let's scroll down a little more, blah, blah, blah. This is your typical uh, volcano-style nozzle design, only this is nickel-plated copper. Um, I do have some things from Triangle Labs, but not really a whole lot. But if I was going to go that route, because it's really a high-flow thing with volcanoes, get something that will help keep the heat so copper higher thermal mass than brass heats up conducts heat better and will retain that heat better so you'll get better consistency of the molten plastic be better better consistency keeping the plastic molten with this so um if i was going for that if i was doing that setup this is what i would do now they have these graphs, right? I don't know how accurate these graphs actually are. This is just them advertising, right? But we talk about uh, thermal conductivity, right? And we, we go from like brass, you know, here you go to copper. It's, it's just way, way more conductive. So uh, this, I, I've never used a volcano, but if I was going that route, this is what I would probably try out first. Anywho, going back to the comments. Holy cow, I've missed quite a few comments. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Okay. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Where do you buy those thermistors from? So those thermistors, those hex bolt thermistors. Uh these are standard 3950 100k thermistors tell you what i think i can just give y'all a link to it uh let me see here ah cool okay so I'm going to put a link in the chat, guys. That is where you can get those hex bolt thermistors that I was talking about. Now, I if, if you all watch my videos, you'll know I'm pretty bad about giving links to any of the products that I talk about. And the reason I don't put links in there is because there's so many people that do reviews on stuff that use those links and, and they're always like, they're always an affiliate link, right? And I just, that does not sit well with me, that sort of thing, because it gives the perception that you're only saying something's good in the hopes that someone will buy it so you get a financial kickback from it. I don't like that. That doesn't sit right with me. So any links that I give, I try to remove any sort of thing like that. I don't do affiliate links. I talk about stuff. If it's good, I let you know. If it's crap, I let you know. And it's just, you know, I don't like that idea that it's a perceived thing because sometimes you can't tell if it's an affiliate link or not. Some people don't disclose if they're using affiliate links or not. So in the live streams, I will be happy to give a link to what we're talking about here. But that that's why i'm so bad at giving links out because i just i don't like that idea i don't want to be associated with these affiliate link things i've had people steal my videos and just do a direct re-upload on their channel and they'll just have affiliate links everywhere they'll be like oh my honest opinion about such and such product but it's my video they just stole it and they're pretending to be me and then they have an affiliate link so that hopefully someone will buy it and then they get a kickback off of my video that they stole. I have to report those videos because it's not even fair use. If it was fair use, I wouldn't care, but they just re-upload 100% of my video and add nothing to it. And I'm like, 
this is this is what I have to deal with. So I just don't do it on uh, my end personally. I, I I'm I'm not I'm not gonna deal with that. Uh, anywho, let's get back to those comments. Let's see. Da, 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 da. At Andrew. Yeah, the NF hot end with the volcano block I'm using is a copper block. It's more temp stable than I expected. Yeah, copper blocks are awesome. Even if you're not going high temp usage, the, the temperature stability of copper is beautiful. It's so much better than aluminum. There is no good reason to continue using aluminum on a heat block. Yeah, if you're going for the most light build you can ever do, sure, aluminum will work. But it's not better than copper for most things. And especially if you're using a hardened steel nozzle. I'm using that M2 hardened steel nozzle like I was talking about, which I paid for for MicroSwiss. Let me be clear about something really quick. Uh, MicroSwiss doesn't sponsor anything, by the way. I pay for all my products. I do uh, shoot some emails to them once in a while when I have questions and ideas, and we talk back and forth a little bit, especially when I'm asking them to make me a custom product, because a lot of the things that I ask for are kind of one-off custom deals, and, you know, in that respect, but I'm still paying for it. It's not, they, they don't, they don't ask me to talk about them. I just talk about them because they're actually good, um, and... You know, it's not it's not worth your time and headache where we're dealing with bad products, man. I've had days where I've spent actually like a full blown like fifteen hours at a printer diagnosing issues back when I first started printing. I do not look back on those days fondly because nowadays I don't do almost no maintenance because all my parts are just so freaking reliable. Okay, back to the comments. Let's see. Trail Future says that I actually just ordered some mellow volcano nozzles because I wanted a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for some detailed prints without having to swap hot ends. Hoping they are decent. I hope they work for you. 0.4 millimeters is the absolute lowest you can realistically do on a volcano from what I'm told. Volcanoes love big bore nozzles. So if you're doing like... Man, if you're doing like, <sighs> volcanoes are particularly good around the one millimeter diameter uh, nozzle area because they just, they're capable of melting it all real quick. But you know what that reminds me of? You know what's even better at that than a volcano is a super volcano. I don't know if y'all have ever seen a super volcano, but allow me to introduce you to the most wackadoo thing I've seen in a while. I, hold on. I have only ever seen one video on YouTube showing an actual super volcano doing anything in real life. But boy, howdy. Let me tell you, if there is some sort of rooster measuring contest, this, all this, is the look at me. Because, <laughs> dear God, I can't actually think of a good reason to use a super volcano hot end like what is the actual point of this it's like if it comes in a 0.4 millimeter nozzle which is like the most standard of sizes but like what plastic do you need to melt to the temperature of the center of the earth to get that to come out of a nozzle that you require such an enormous heat block and nozzle. I actually just don't know. I, th this thing is just so wild. Like, if you've never looked it up, there, there is one video on YouTube of someone using it. I 
it's it's beyond me. I mean, that's that's wild, man. That's wild. And they're telling you to use an eighty an eighty watt heater cartridge, bruh. I use a fifty watt. And that thing heats up pretty quick, but an 80 watt, that might be getting close to exceeding the capability of what most uh, motherboards are rated to send out to the heater cartridge. But, uh, yeah. I mean, this is, this is excessive, but hey, look who makes it. <laughs> it's mellow. Of course it's Mellow. If it's not Mellow, it's Triangle Labs. If it's not them, it's some other weird company I've never heard of before. But take a look at this. This is a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. Remember that your filament is 1.75 millimeters. This thing is almost, it's getting really close to the diameter of your filament. I mean, at a certain point, you're just going to have to start using 3 millimeter diameter filament instead of 1.75, but uh, I don't see a whole lot of 3 millimeter filament printers out there. I mean, at least not ones that are popular. But yeah. I mean, dude, look at this heater cartridge. Like, bro, that is the most massive heater cartridge I've seen ever. And that's, I wonder if, I mean, geez, man, like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> oh, man, I love these tangents, man. If you see something interesting or have some good idea, come, oh, 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 this is what I was talking about earlier, right? If you break, we're going back to the hot ends and stuff. If you break the heat break on one of these like AliExpress only like weird amalgamation hot ends like where are you gonna get another you can't there's no one else in the United States with this and there's they're like company specific a lot of times if it breaks you you just gotta like order a bunch of them and pray to the printer gods that this doesn't happen to you but I mean <sighs> I mean, this isn't even the weirdest hot end either, and neither is that that uh, super volcano. Man, I am trying to get somewhere. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Let's let's deviate and go to the stuff that's cheapo depot. The stuff that might be interesting if you're just getting started in modifying your printer. Now, I actually bought something like this uh, back from TH3D when I first started uh, modifying my hot ends, and it worked, but it mm, I never really liked it that much. And the one thing I really thought they could use is this flat plane right here. So this is a cheap heat break that you can get to turn your standard Mark 8 into an all-metal hot end for 15 bucks. Honestly, if you get one just made out of straight titanium, not this bi-metal situation, you could probably get it cheaper. There's probably other options. But the idea is take off your take off your Bowden or your pneumatic coupler, take out your, your standard heat break, slide this one into where the heat break was. And then this flat pleat, this flat piece right here is where you put the set screw in, the little grub screw, to hold flat up against that. And guess what? Now you've got an all-metal hot end. The the um the Bowden tube will only come in just a tiny bit to just rest nicely inside of the top ends of this. And the rest of it's all metal. So we got we got titanium on the bottom, which is an excellent use of a heat break material because again, titanium is really bad at conducting heat, which is what you want. And you can turn your Cheapo Depot Mark 8 hot end into something that can handle relatively high temperatures, like pretty high stuff. So you'll be able to start doing ABS and PETG and a few other things like that. 
So it's it's just the the absolute cheapskate way of of being able to do some slightly higher temperature prints because if you were to print some ABS or PET G right, you're getting into that 250 Celsius range, and the reason that's bad to do on a Bowden tube uh, Teflon hot end right because if you got a nozzle and your uh, uh, right here and your nozzle is butted up. Uh, right against to the Bowden tube, that PTFE Teflon will start to off-gas toxic materials. And that's very dangerous. That can be seriously harmful to your health. That's why we have all metal hot ends, where this heat break in between the nozzle and the PTFE uh, Bowden tube. So that way you don't heat up the Bowden tube and that off-gassing issue is not a problem anymore because it won't happen. Superconductor says, bang for buck, that hot end conversion with a micro-swiss nozzle would be a great combo. Yeah, honestly, this is kind of neat. Um, the only thing, again, I wish they had is on this heat break right here, if they would just make a flat plane like on a micro-swiss heat break, so that way it only goes into the heat block at a predetermined location, I think that would be friggin' perfect. But... This is this is a cheapo depot situation, right? I I like this idea for beginners, but at the same time I hate it for beginners because if you've never modified a hot end, let me tell you, bad parts will make you hate your printer because a lot of times it's not even your fault. It's just a part not doing what it should. Doing this type of conversion, I've done it as a newbie and as someone who's way more experienced with this stuff now, I would just say it should work, but that doesn't mean it is going to work. That's kind of the uh, uh, the double-edged sword of that whole situation, right? Oh, let me take a sip of my shoulder. Talking a lot here, but hey, it's the live stream. All right, let's get some. Oh, uh, where should we go from here, y'all? Uh, well, you know what? While we're talking about copper and stuff, why don't I talk about this right here? Because, uh, in terms of yeah, in terms of heat blocks for a Mark 8 setup, this I, I really like this because you've got you've got the little hole for your glass bead thermistor. You've got actually hold on, I think it's a better picture. Should be a better picture. Yes, right here. This is why I like this is the one thing Micro Swiss just needs to do to stay relevant right now. They need to start offering copper heat blocks, which I've talked to them about it, and all I know is that they're thinking about releasing a high temperature a hot end, but it's only a thought. I don't know anything for sure. As far as I know, it's not a secret, but maybe no one's asked with me. But this is nice because this is a copper mark 8 heat block but look at this you can use your glass bead thermistor you can use a bolt type thermistor which would go in here you can use a cartridge type thermistor you can use a pt100 or pt1000 cartridge uh, uh not thermistor but thermocouple and you've got your heater cartridge hole right there and you've got the beauty of it being copper and if we if we look up here like i don't know i don't know how you're going to be able to compete with this but it's seven dollars and 81 cents there's probably a little bit of tax because yes there is tax on aliexpress believe it or not and uh shipping is like four bucks <laughs> uh ralph says thanks now i gotta get one <laughs> well i know i know you might hate it because you see it in like Oh, that's a good idea, but trust me, copper, so much better. 
you are going to love copper heat blocks. It is the only way to go for me. I am never looking back. Copper heat blocks are stronger. They conduct heat better. They maintain heat better. It's only a tiny bit of weight that you're putting on comparatively. But man, it has made my life so much better. You don't have to worry as much about over torquing the nozzle and destroying your heat block because it's made of some sort of Swiss cheese aluminum. Okay, but I do want to be fair. When it comes to aluminum, let's say this is aluminum, right? If you got a standard aluminum, I promise you there is a huge difference between the aluminum that they use for cheapo depot AliExpress heat blocks versus Micro Swiss. Uh, there are different alloys of aluminum that are used. And there's only really one in particular that blends a proper amount of strength and heat conduction for use in a heater block if it must be aluminum and there's so i don't remember the exact alloy off the top of my head but micro swiss does use the right alloy of aluminum for this i cannot tell you how many cheap aliexpress uh heat blocks that were made of aluminum that i absolutely just destroyed because when i screwed in the the uh there's a mosquito in my room. Uh, when I screwed in the nozzle into the heat block, I went just a tiny little bit too tight, and I just ripped the threads right out of the bore on the heat block. And I'm like, dang. With copper, I've had no such issues. I am so much more confident with copper. Oh, that's not a mosquito. That's a fly. That's a chunky fly that just flew by. Oh no, I got flies in my house. Get, get out of here. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. Eric says Triangle Labs Dragon Core Dragon Heat Break for Dragon Hot End Repair Parts. High temperature hot end compatible with Dragon Hot End. Alright, tell you what. Let's look that up. Let me see if I can pull that up here. Triangle Labs Dragon Hot Ends. Do, 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 do. Oh, I've seen this before. Uh, I don't know why it's only pulling up the heat sink. Hold on. Let me, let me bring this over. I have, I have seen this before. Um, hey, there it is. This was like the first mosquito knockoff that I had ever seen. So again, we're going back to slice engineering. Uh, this is absolutely derived from their design. They're using the same idea for you for bracing the heat block onto the heat sink so it's stiff it's rigid and you can do one-handed nozzle changes without having to secure the heat block with a tool you've got the thin a metal in the heat break with a tiny little heat sink to dissipate heat but also the thin metal helps prevent you know building up heat upwards anyway you've also got uh well it looks like yeah and you can get so there, if you look at these two parts right here uh one is a regular and one is the magnum version or i believe that's what uh slice engineering calls theirs is magnum it just adds a bigger chunk of uh copper right around here so there's extra thermal mass to really try and like melt that plastic before it gets down further and then they've got a V6 style mount with a Bowden collet. So you can use a Bowden tube setup or direct drive directly on the V6 mount. Looks like they're using standard Mark 8 nozzles. You know what? Hold on. That might not be Mark 8. That might be E3D V6 type nozzles. I could be wrong. 
Do, 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 do. Does it say... There's a lot of V6 talk here. I'm thinking it's probably V6. They're going through each part. Yeah, I know, right? High flow. What does that mean? The one thing I will say, I find it really interesting, is they're giving you a bunch of the diagrams showing you where everything is. And I think the reason they do this is really important because they realize anyone who buys this is really responsible for making their own mounts and everything for it. Because it's just a hot end. You, it's up to you to find out how exactly you're going to put that on your printer. And then on top of that, how you're going to design the parts cooling fans around it underneath the nozzle and all that. Like, that's, that's kind of important. So they give you all these diagrams to help you design your own stuff and you know what i have i've seen this picture and i've seen this picture so many times now throughout the years they are not printing these things every time they make a new hot end. they're just not because they've shown these pictures and there's the one with the castle or whatever and they use pei or they use peak as like a demonstration because those are really difficult filaments to work with right like PEI and then peak polyether ether ketone is also, I mean, that's that's good stuff, but I think it's being replaced by polyether ketone ketone, which is a bit easier to work with. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see what we find. Huh. Let's check this out. Well, this certainly looks derivative of something we've seen earlier in this live stream. Mello has their version, and it looks like Triangle Labs has theirs. Let's see. Well, at least this... At least this is actually, like, separate pieces that you can disassemble if you need to, you know? Do, 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 compatible with everything. Oh, hey, check that out. It's a modular design. So, you can use a Mark 8 mounting system, or you can swap it out with a V6 style mounting system. How interesting. How interesting. But... Trying to figure out. So for direct drive, yes. So okay, yeah, no, it is. It's definitely full metal. I was thinking for a second, looking at the bore size right here. I'm like, are they expecting the? No, that's just they have this upside down. That's what it is. I was thinking this bottom part right here was going down there, right? Uh, that's not what it is. This is the bore that goes up here where your Bowden tube sits, and then down here it's threaded to butt up directly against the nozzle inside the heat block. Cool. That makes sense. Because looking at these pictures right here, I'm like, well, that looks a little different. But, hey, take a look at that. You can use a J-head heat block or a Mark 8 heat block. How interesting. Do they both use the same thread diameter and pitch? I wasn't sure if they did or didn't, but I, I guess apparently they do. And they're doing the bimetal thing here too, because you look right in there, you will see that is titanium inside of the copper. Man, I hope they're they've ref, they figured out the issues they were having with the whole bimetal situation, because if they haven't, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people out there. But this one's pretty interesting, and oh, look at that it's it's an Aprusia clone. It's interesting. You got a fifty fifteen blower for your parts. You've got yourself, this is probably re replacing directly a V6 that would normally be there. And you've got your direct drive on top. You've got your proximities, ABL. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Or, 
Conversely, you've got your Ender 3, the two most popular printers, Prusa Mark 3 and Ender 3. This is this is pretty neat actually. I like this one. I like the idea of this one so much better than the one from Mellow. Even though I I they're both kind of the same but they're kind of different too, you know. I wonder do we have the one no, I don't have the mellow one pulled up. I was thinking about putting them side by side and kind of looking at it. But, you know, this I can appreciate. They actually take a good picture because I can't tell you how many times I've seen really bad pictures for um, products on AliExpress. And it really just leaves you scratching your head thinking, what the heck are they even talking about here? Eric Garcia, do you use bird, bird air cooling? B E R D air cooling. I'm actually not sure what that word is. Bird air cooling. Yeah. Uh, as far as my setups, I I use air cooling. I don't know. Okay, now y'all got me wanting to Google. Hold on. Let me let me Google what this is because y'all y'all got me interested in looking this up now. Hold on. Definitely getting results. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's take a look. I know this is off screen. That's some wild stuff. Huh. It's not a bad idea. So, you know what? Tell you what. I don't... Because this is an AliExpress stream, I'm not going to look at it here, but here is a link in the chat. I think this is what he was talking about. I, I feel like I've seen this on the speedboat racing... Uh, where instead of using a fan to blow air on the parts, uh, someone was using an air compressor, which makes air really cold. I have, I've got a lot of pneumatic tools, so I trust me, I know how cold that stuff can get, right? And they were using an air compressor and controlling and regulating the flow of that air with an air compressor to just give a constant stream of like high pressure, like really cold air. Uh, going directly under the nozzle to cool things off because dude made a whole benchy in like three minutes which is bro but yeah B-E-R-D Air Max I am looking at it that yeah oh, you know what that's neat because it just yeah, you'll just be having air dispersed all around the nozzle directly. That's really cool. And it looks like the little thing in that link, there's a little pump that's controlled. 12 or 24 volt. That's really cool. That's really cool. <laughs> hey, look. John says, Eric, you showed Andrew something he didn't know. Trust me. I do not know everything. Right? I look, I find new stuff out every day, but I tell you what, never, never, life advice time, don't ever assume you know everything because there's always something new to learn. And trust me, it's so much better to learn new things every day. Don't ever be stagnant. Keep on going. Keep on doing, getting better. And there's new information out, absorb it like a sponge. And just put it to use. Information is out there. And man, I've seen a lot of cool ideas come to fruition because of that. <laughs> Eric says, oh, I should get a free roll of filament. Yeah, I've got I've got some really awful garbage filament. If you wanna if you wanna come pick it up, you can have the worst filament you've ever seen in your life. It'll give you more headaches than 
something that gives you headaches. I was trying to, there was, there was a joke there somewhere, but it just didn't, it didn't happen. <laughs> oh man. Cool. Man, keep, keep up the good ideas, guys. Cause there's, there's gotta be, I mean, like I've never seen this hot end, right? But they're, they're putting out new things like every day. Like, I, I get a lot of comments on videos saying, like, the Chinese companies don't innovate. They just copy. And to an extent, mm, that can sort of be true. But I don't know. I think there's the the combining of good ideas into these products all in one. That, that, that's got to count for something. You know. Oh, man. What else do we got going on down here? Da, 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 da. Ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. Oh, speaking of paired air cooling, man, the algorithm is getting really good. <laughs> the algorithm's starting to know us, y'all. We're 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 getting found out. Oh no, they know us too well. All right, hold on. Let's 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 take a good look at this here. Yeah, uh, da, 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 da. this is this is the pump. Oh man, this is this is this looks like the pump that's supplying the air supply. And okay, so we got a power supply going to a switch that powers a pump that puts air. That goes directly underneath your nozzle, but it's missing the tubes. It's got a small air tube, but it's not looking at the metal piece, like these these little metal pieces right here. It's it's a circular thing with little holes that just goes right around the nozzle. That's kind of cool. That's that's neat. Man, creativity. I feel like this was a thing that started to be developed like right around the speedboat racing series when that started to start because I've seen people use air compressors rather than just blower fans. That is neat. That is neat. Uh, we went into water cooling, water cooled parts in the last stream. So I don't really want to go down that road again, but you know, these orbital extruders, I've been seeing these pop up. Triangle Labs, genuine authorized. Orbital extruder for the Voron. I've I've been seeing the Voron getting more and more popular. It's isn't that isn't that one of the open source printers? I'm pretty sure. And it uses kind of a almost a custom made uh, stepper motor that's like tailored to the design. Oh man, that fly just came out of nowhere and landed on my head for a second there. Ugh. I'm gonna get fly traps now. Man. Summer is wonderful except for the bugs. Can we have summer without bugs? That would be nice. Compatible with everything. So let's get a picture of how this is set up. Cause I mean it at at so that's an extruder, but how does it connect to something? We gotta... Eric says, I have an orbiter. It's awesome. It pushes more plastic than a BMG. Well, I tell you what, a BMG is already pretty friggin' good. If it's pushing more plastic than a BMG, then boy, howdy. Let me tell you, that's a, that's a tall feat. Superconductor says, I got a BMG clone extruder. They are cheap and really functional. I want to try the orbiter, but don't feel like experimenting anymore. 
Listen, I know that feeling, especially when you get your printer just perfectly dialed in. You do, you're like, you see something new and think, dude, that's really cool, but I've got this piece of machinery that's already built really well, and in theory, this other part would help, but it's already really good. That's why I've got two, two machines. My machine uses genuine parts from manufacturers, and my friend's machine uses all clones of those parts. So we've been having fun trying to figure out which parts are worth getting that are actually clones versus the real deal. Orbital extruders. Now let's see. Uh, here's, here's something that looks kind of interesting. This looks kind of like... Do, do, do. John says, I got the LDO Galileo, Galileo, okay, man, I'm probably butchering that word, which is basically an orbiter for the Voron afterburner. I gotta, I, I gotta branch away from Ender 3s at some point. We want to get an Ender 5 and just make a gigantic frame for it to make a monster printer. Um... But, currently have space limitations for that. So this is Frog Extruder. That's a creative name. Well, all machines need good parts. I agree with that. Okay, so this is, well... I don't know, guys. Is this is is this a uh, an orbital extruder direct drive? Kind of looks like it, but I'm I'm kind of new to the whole orbital extruder thing. I tell you what, Shows, oh, it comes with a plate. Hey, it comes with a metal bracket. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Metal parts, please. We gotta stop using 3D printed parts for load bearing structures on our printers. But Eric says scroll back up to the Sherpa mini extruder. Okay. The Sherpa mini extruder. Perhaps that was on the other page. Uh, but tell you what, I'll just, I'll just look that up. Sherpa Mini Extruder. Here we go. It's a Triangle Labs thing, huh? The thing, or John says, the thing with the orbital orbit, yeah, the orbiter is. It is uses planetary gears. Oh, that's cool. Well, yeah, that'll certainly increase torque now, won't it? I guess that's how they're getting away with such a small extruder. No need to worry about the whole page thing. There's a delay, by the way, between what I see and say versus what you guys see. I currently have a streaming setup to do better quality video, and to do that, there's a bit of latency. But I, I am trying to keep up with y'all here. So, let's see. The uh, Triangle Lab Sherpa Mini Extruder. Let's get a gander at what's going on here. Oh, it's a Prusa Mini. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that would make sense. Um, squishy filament. After upgrade, before upgrade. Well, honestly, you can just say before tuning and after tuning because you can get some, you can get some pretty good results with things that are actually tuned properly. I tell you what, ah, flies back. Maybe I'll three D print a fly trap. Superconductor says the Galileo. 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 Is that what it is? Galileo, yeah, Galileo extruder looks really interesting. 
John says the stream is working good. Well, I'm really glad to hear it's working good because this is like the second stream I've done. I, I used to do a few live streams here and there, but that was like from my phone, not from on my computer. Eric says it uses all the same components of a BMG. Yeah, you know, hold on, let me... Let me look something up, because one thing I've wondered for a while, BMG Extruder, Bond Tech, oh, that's the name. That's the company that makes the real, genuine uh, BMG Extruder. And the thing about it is, I don't know if Bond Tech ever meant for the BMG to be an open source product. Maybe they did. But I don't know. I've actually never, I've never, I, I tweeted at them once to ask them if it was or wasn't supposed to be an open source intellectual property and never got an answer. So I know, because the thing is like, so think about the, it's like Slice Engineering's products. They patented all their products, the Mosquito and the Copperhead, still got copied by Chinese manufacturers in like half a year. So it's one of those things where you get like, it discourages people from wanting to invest in a design because it takes money and research and development to really make something new and good. And even if you go through the process of patenting your design, if someone just kind of rips it off and then sells it for like a quarter, or just a fraction of the price of what you're asking to sustain your own business, man, that's got a sting. It's like being a victim of your own success. You make something good and everyone wants it. And then, and to be fair, I've had, I've man, I've been in that boat because I, I've designed some things that I... A lot of the videos you'll see on my channel of the printers doing their things are of a thing that I design and I sell a lot of. And I've got people that get mad at me for not giving away my designs for free. Because I'm like, well, this is kind of part of my business. There's a reason why I, I don't give my intellectual property away for free because I, I sell it. You know? But, I mean, I get that. There's definitely an open source part of the community, but I feel like there's people in the 3D printing industry that are all about open source but refuse to contribute to anything. Like, you, I mean, some do some people not realize Marlin, the firmware most people use, is being developed by, like, particularly, like, for the most part, one dude. And that particular individual, like, people donate to the Marlin firmware project to pay for this dude to continue to develop it. Like he makes the whole thing open source, which is awesome. But if no one donated money to this dude, if they just took, took and took and never gave back, there would be no more Marlin updates. It's, it's the same thing with anything from like, uh, like your Octopi or your Octoprints. Like, the money has to come from somewhere. Like, it's not just a hobby for them, you know? And so when you buy things from TH3D, a uh, portion of that product, so portion of those sales, I think, still goes to donating towards the Marlin firmware project. That's, that's the nice thing about supporting some, like, American companies like TH3D is you buy from them and you kind of help ensure that progress continues to be made. So nothing is truly free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. But there's just some people in the community that demand everything be free. I don't know. It doesn't sound sustainable. Superconductor says, I heard Sanjay from E3D say they are partnering with the Chinese makers to make parts to their specs instead of just losing business from them. That's not a, that might not be a bad idea, actually. But here's the thing. I don't know how long that's going to last, even if they do do that. So one of the things that I print, I've printed literally hundreds of them. And I've sold 
hundreds of them. And people really like the design work that I do because they're functional products and such. And I was thinking about going to injection molding with the design because it sells really well. And if I had injection molded uh, versions of it, I would be able to make the same exact thing for like 15 cents in a matter of seconds. And I would sell those designs on Amazon, right? But I would only, I would never go to a Chinese manufacturer to injection mold my design. Because the moment you do, your intellectual property is just not secure anymore. It's going to be reproduced by someone there. Doesn't th These contracts, these the, even if it's just like an honorary contract or something like that, even if you just say, hey, can you make this for me? They're like, sure, but they'll keep the designs, and then if it's convenient for them, they'll start making it and selling it themselves and then undercut you. And that's kind of the problem. There's this balance that has to be made between those who make progress and those who make products. You know, it's it's a delicate balance. If you remove all the incentive to make progress, I mean, you're just relying at that point on people who have a lot of free time and don't mind stuff being open source and not being compensated for their work. I mean... Open source is great. Collaboration is wonderful. But money still has to flow to make these things viable. I don't know. Some people just, you know, they're not, they're, they're not about keeping that flow going. But, hey, everyone's got an opinion. And that's okay. Yeah, let's see. We looked at this hot end on the last stream. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. Just uh, 3D, the th 3D printer things. <laughs> oh, all the things involving 3D printers. Oh, man, we're not really coming up with anything interesting. Well, you know, we've been looking at hot end stuff a lot. But you know what? Some 22 TMC 2209 stepper drivers. Uh, da, 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 da. So, you know, if you've got yourself one of them motherboards that you can swap the stepper drivers for, this is definitely one of the more popular ones for sure. I run 2208s on my TH3D Easy Board Lite, and I love my 2208s, but there's definitely some advantages of the 2209s that we should totally talk about. But, here's what I'm thinking, y'all. I think we're going to end the stream here. But, next time we look at some stuff on AliExpress, instead of focusing on hot ends and extruders, I think we should dive into the interesting world of motherboard components, like these drivers and the different boards out there because that that's going to get real technical and real interesting because I haven't really done a dive into that section. So I'm thinking that is going to be what we live stream next time. And next time I'll try and make a better plan now. Like I'll post in the community tab on my YouTube page a time when I'm going to stream. So if y'all want to join me, you can easily uh, know what time I'm actually going to be doing this because this was just totally at random, which thank y'all for joining me. This has been fun. Before I go, I'll read a few more comments. Superconductor says that, Andrew, you got me thinking about saving up or about just saving up for the micro or slice engineering instead of rolling the dice on Chinese parts. Time has value. Yeah, it really does. Think about how much time you spend diagnosing issues on your printer and fixing them and doing routine maintenance because you can make something talk the talk, but can you make it walk the walk? One step at a time. A little joke there, get it? Step, steppers. I'll see myself out. <laughs> um, there's definitely reasons to get the real deal. There are clones out there that are really good. But man, I tell you what, 
it's hard to get the same level of quality from the originators of the idea because they're the ones with the intellectual property. They're the ones that kind of know what they're doing with their design, you know? There's reasons for it. The manufacturers that make the clones might not exactly know the exact reasons why certain designs are done the way they are, but there's definitely some good stuff. Some stuff I want to try. Still, hmm, there's a price to be paid from getting the knockoffs versus the original. But yeah, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and stop it here, guys. But hey, thank you for joining. Uh, hopefully, I will see you guys in the next live stream when we deep dive into motherboards, stepper drivers, and all the technological gobbledygook uh, that involves or surrounds this industry. So, y'all have a good one, and I will see you another time. Remember, I will be posting that time in the community tab of my channel.